just gotta look at it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It's Monday morning and it's September 2nd, 2019. We, of course, uh, start this day um, mourning the loss of a very good friend of ours, uh, Dr. Anna uh, Gutierrez, who passed away last night uh, after a very long um, battle with uh, cancer. So as we begin uh, this day, let us, I'd like to enjoin you, everyone who might be listening to this broadcast this morning to please keep Dr. Anna, in your prayers, uh, Dr. Anna was uh, served with me in the parish council at St. Joseph's for uh, the years that we were there. She was a very staunch supporter of truth, uh, conservative uh, in her faith and the practice of her faith, and um, a very strong uh, Catholic, very strong lady. Um, she bore plenty of uh, the trials that God has sent her way and uh, her family's way just a couple of years before uh, she herself got sick her own husband Roberto passed away and um, left her and uh, two children Franco and Maria Pia so let's uh, keep the children in mind, Franco and Maria, that they will be able to um, stem the tide of this trial in their lives, losing both parents at a very early age. And let's pray that they look at this situation with great faith. Okay, so let's do the commentary for today's uh, gospel, today's mass. We have the Gospel from St. Luke, chapter 4, 16 to 30. This is a story of our Lord Jesus going uh, back to his uh, native place. And he happens to go to a synagogue to worship on the Sabbath. And he was made to do the reading uh, during the service. And when he opened up the scroll, he opened up that particular scroll from Isaiah um, which says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor he has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord he closes the book and tells his listeners this particular scripture is being fulfilled right now in your very hearing. And of course, our Lord was referring to himself. He was the one that Isaiah was talking about. <clears throat> it was he who was going to be sent, the anointed one, <clears throat> who was going to bring glad tidings to the poor, the tidings of salvation, the tidings of the good news of opening up heaven for everyone. And then uh, his listeners started to question and ask, uh, you know, where did he get these things? Isn't he the uh, carpenter's son? Isn't he the son of Joseph? Don't we know him? Don't we know his mother, his cousins, and everybody in this community knows him? Where did he get these things? Right? And our Lord tells them, Amen, I say to you. No prophet is accepted in his own native place. <clears throat> the uh, more uh, traditional version of that line goes, No prophet is without honor except in his own country. <clears throat> but the English translation of this one is more direct, right? No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Why is that? Because, well, just like Jesus People tend to question where, where you or us or we who proclaim the truth to others, where we might be getting the knowledge that we are 
proclaiming to others. People tend to inquire about how we learn what we know and, and, and question the authority with which we say the truth that we say to people, especially when it comes to matters of faith and morals. But Jesus tells us here and shows us the example of how we should proclaim the truth regardless of what other people might say or think about us. We should always, always say and proclaim the truth. Especially if the truth we are proclaiming to others is something that we did not invent. Something that we did not concoct on our own. And things related to faith and morals particularly are truths that do not belong to us. Right? They are God's. And all that we are doing is, number one, living by those truths. And number two, using our lives as testimonials that we are living proof of the truth that we proclaim. And number three, that we proclaim it regardless of what other people might think and might say. And regardless of the consequences on our own reputation and even on our own lives just as jesus oftentimes told his listeners right the father and i are one what i am telling you i only heard from my father see so what i'm telling you are things that i've heard and learned from my father and we we're doing the same things the the, the apostles from old were doing the same things the Roman martyrs in the early ages of the Catholic Church were doing the same things. Even the people of Nigeria nowadays who are being slaughtered by, by the Muslims are doing the same thing. They're proclaiming the truth that they did not invent. They're proclaiming the truth they possess, which they did not invent. They did not concoct. They were just telling things as they are. Okay? They're speaking the truth. Because, because that is the truth. And they're convinced of the truth. Right? And because they're living up to the grace of their own confirmation. Okay? The sacrament of confirmation, if we review what is the sacrament of confirmation and what does it do to us? What grace does the sacrament of confirmation uh, give us to do? Hmm? Anybody? How's that? It makes, us a soldier. it makes us soldiers of Christ, right? It strengthens, it strengthens us in our baptismal calling, okay? To be children of God and at the same time uh, to proclaim that fact, to proclaim those truths to others right? as a soldier of Christ, as a defender of the, of the faith. So... When people tend to question us and when, when we ourselves tend to doubt whether we should actually go out there and, and speak the truth to others, we have to realize and be convinced that, <clears throat> number one, we have the grace of our own confirmation to do this. And number two, the truth that we are proclaiming is not ours. It's not ours. So this is not about us. Okay? When we speak the truth, it's not about us. It's all about God. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about our faith. It's all about what God wanted us to do in the first place, which is to go out into the world, proclaim the good news, and baptize everybody in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is what our Lord had commanded us to do. And when he says, come follow me, well, we're just following his example of proclaiming these truths to others. So, uh, let us not be afraid. Let us not be timid. Let us not be shy to speak the truth, especially if we are noticing and realizing that there's so many wrong things going on around us uh, uh, we cannot keep quiet we cannot 
shut up. We cannot be silent. We have to speak the truth to others. And uh, sometimes we, we, we get the brunt of uh, misunderstanding. Uh, sometimes people uh, don't speak kindly about us. Sometimes people slander us for doing what we do and speaking the truth to them. But uh, I guess that's the price. That's the price. That's, that's, that's our share of the martyrdom that, uh, that is part of uh, speaking the truth. Just like our own brothers and sisters of, in the faith who have already been martyred before us. They, they had offered their lives and dying uh, really by shedding their blood. Uh, they offered their own lives for the truth. We in this day and age... Maybe we are not being martyred and killed in the streets or wherever we are, but you know, the, we are being slandered, we are being called names, we are being called all sorts of things. Well, that is our share of martyrdom. Okay? That is our own share of martyrdom, but we cannot keep quiet. We cannot keep quiet. We owe it to our own uh, conviction and to our own commitment to God to speak the truth. Otherwise, Otherwise, if we shut up, if we keep quiet, well, we will also suffer the consequences of that. As one saint said, Saint Jose Maria Escriva de Balaguer said, you know, hell is full of good people with closed mouths. Hell is full of good people who did not proclaim the truth, who did not speak out, who did not stand up for their faith. I don't want to be counted among those. And that's why I talk. And I would encourage you too, everybody, to speak out when there are things around you that are not quite in keeping with our faith and morals and good practices in the Catholic Church. Speak out. It's your duty to do so. And it is an expression of your love for God. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Have a good Monday ahead of you. It's Labor Day here in America. So let us give thanks for all the work we, had, we have and we do. And um, let us perhaps uh, resolve to, to uh, be better workers wherever it is that we are and whatever kind of trade or occupation uh, we perform. So have a good day, everybody. Hey, Danny. Uh, Good evening to you there in uh, the Philippines. I uh, please accept our condolences for the passing of your brother, Dicky. Uh, I knew him personally, myself. Um, uh, condolences to you and your family and your mom and your uh, your your other brothers, Hans, uh, your sisters, Mary. Um, you know, we'll be praying for Dicky. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.